Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I am actually going to talk about process death in Android. What that is, why you should care about it, and what you can do to prevent it. It's, yeah, it's a quite important topic, so you shouldn't skip this. It's very easy to, to deal with that, but something not many people are actually aware of. I wasn't aware of that um, a long time as well, but yeah isn't actually very difficult. Let's first of all understand what process death in Android is. So occasionally it can happen that if your app is in the background or very rarely also if it is in the foreground that the Android system kills it and that is called process death in the end. Something I want to show you here and the, the problem that actually occurs with that if we have some kind of state in our app, which we always have, like here, the, the minimal example of just having a button that we can click and it increases a counter, which is in the end just composed state in a view model. As you can see here, mm, here I have a main view model and we just have a counter composed state. And when we click the button, we call a count function, which increases the counter by one. However, if we now minimize the app, then open our app, uh, our recent apps here, then you can see we, we still have that app minimized. We can click on it. Our state is still there. We can still see you clicked me 12 times. However, if we actually go back to Android Studio and keep the app minimized, go to Lockhead, then you will actually see this little terminate button here. And this will terminate our application. So that's what you can do to simulate process death. Um, so to simulate that the Android system sends the command to your app that it needs to get killed. And let's do this. Switch back on my device. If we now open the app drawer here, you can still see that our app is in there. However, if we now open this, you can see our state is actually lost. So it's, it now says you clicked me zero times. And this can lead to weird states, especially um, in larger, more complex applications, because the user is still navigated to the screen they actually minimized the app at. However, the state is lost and reset to the initial state of the corresponding view model. So even though you're using a view model, which is the preferred way, the state can be lost. And I will now show you how we can fix this. Super easy, but you just have to know that. Let's switch to Android. You can see my very simple view model. And the golden solution here is called saved state handle. I'm sure you've heard of that before. Um, that's something that we can actually use to put state in and that we can use to put variables in and stuff like that. And the safe state handle, uh, safe state handle will actually be restored on process death. So for view models, if we use this here, we can simply provide that saved state handle here in the constructor, this one. And then we can now use this. And whenever we actually increase or change our state here, we use our saved state handle. And we also want to say we set a specific key, let's say our counter, to our new counter. And that way we make sure that as soon as our app is actually um, killed by the Android system and relaunched, the new saved state handle that will be passed to the new view model will contain this old counter. And then what we can use, uh, what we can do is we can use this counter from the safe state handle and initialize our counter here with that value instead of the zero. So if there is a key, a counter key in our safe state handle here, so safe state handle get counter, if that's not equal to zero, we will instead use this counter value. And if it is zero for the initial app launch, we will simply initialize the counter with zero. And if we now relaunch this, take a look here. If we now click this button sometimes, minimize the app, go back to Android Studio, open Logcat, terminate the app here on this button, go back to my device. And if we now actually open the app from our app drawer, then you can see now the state is actually restored. So even though the, the app was killed in between, we can still restore the state uh, where the user actually left. Now for lots of apps, that's really not a big issue if you don't deal with that, because um, very often you don't have any, um, there are not many possibilities of these weird states that can really lead to 
yeah, to something you don't want in your app. But the more complex it gets, the more important it also gets uh, to, to deal with process death. And as you can see, it's very, it's very easy. Um, you might now also wonder what happens if you have a more complex state. Of course, a counter, just an integer, is very easy to deal with. So very often we all, yeah, we just want to reflect our whole UI in one state object. And the good thing is you can also simply save parser levels in safe state handle. So in that case, you just make your state class a parser level, and then you can also save it the same way. You might want to have a global, like not the global, um, I mean just a normal function here, update state, which would then update your state and also make sure to always save the the new state in your safe state handle. Important is don't do this in uncleared because when the app is killed from the Android system, then uncleared of the view model is not called. So you need to save the new state as soon as you actually update it. And if you actually want to learn about making multi-module applications using clean architecture, using multiple features, using all that clean code stack, then you definitely don't want to miss next Sunday's video because then I'm going to release my next big course about doing exactly that. So stay tuned, have an amazing day and see you back in the next video. Bye bye.